Okay, how's everybody doing this morning? Hope you're doing well on this Sunday. Just going to give it a minute to refresh the feed and make sure the live feed's caught up. This is Paint with Lovejoy, and today we are painting an octopus or an octopi since it's just one little guy. Um, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to do a blue, a teal background, and this is going to be an orange octopus with yellow highlights. And we're going to get kind of expressive as we get into those little sucker tentacles and just kind of having fun. So a little bit of what you're looking at on the screen. Um, I am working on an 8x10 panel. Um, a stretched canvas is going to be a little bit taller, and if you are working on a stretched canvas, I recommend that when you get to the edges, just carry that color around the side. And I have on here my drawing already, you know, for my composition. So you've got two options to get this on your canvas at home. You can pause the video, draw what you see on your canvas, and then pick up the video for the painting portion. Or in the description box below, there is a link to what we call a traceable and you can purchase the traceable, you download it, print it off on your printer at home, and then with carbon paper, you're gonna transfer that image to your canvas. And for my first time painters, the traceable is a nice way to kind of get your composition on your canvas so that way you don't have to uh, worry or stress out about drawing, um, and then you can jump right into painting. I do have um, some doodle videos and some step-by-step -step drawing stuff that's coming up. And I do, there is a video already released on the Paint with Lovejoy YouTube channel um, for a simple grid method uh, drawing to where you could take this traceable and you'll break it up into a grid. And then you're basically strengthening the power of observation um, to draw what you see. And the more that you do it, the easier it gets. And then um, you just keep on practicing. All right, so we're gonna start with our background first and I'm gonna go with teal. I'm kind of going for kind of a medium teal. So you can kind of add to the color that you want. Pull a little bit of white aside, and then you slowly add your pigment into your white. And if you prefer blue, feel free to switch out your color and uh, make this blue. I'm a little partial right now to the teal and orange color combo, and that's what we'll be using today. And let's see, hi everybody. All right, scrolling down. All right, hi V, hi Photography Queen, Denise, Tammy, and oh, I see a question. All right, cool. I'm trying to read like four things at once. Um, I'm kind of with you for drawing out of your imagination. Um, it is quite stressful. I personally draw from photo reference. I have a lot of friends that just draw out of their imagination, no problem and I am rather envious of them. Um, so there's just kind of two different drawing styles. I'm sure more than two actually, um, but just kind of find what works for you. So if photo reference works, try these um, simple line drawings and try the grid method. And that's a good way to just kind of get more and more comfortable with drawing and focusing on what you see. So once you've got your color that you like, um, we're going to be filling in everything from our octopus, from the lines to the edges. And we're also going to be filling in a little bit of this area here underneath, because this guy's got tentacles going all over the place. So I'm just going to put little markers um, where we'll still be filling in the paint. Now, if you have to mix your color two or three times, don't stress about getting the exact same shade. We will do a little wet on wet blending and kind of play with the color um, in the background. Now, if you paint over or on the inside of your traceable or your image, don't stress. Acrylic paint dries pretty quick and anything you don't like, you just paint right on top of it after it dries. Yes. And as far as even the question earlier about drawing, um, I'm gonna release the doodles. I'm still filming a few and editing. Um, and the more you just kind of doodle and maybe know that you're going to throw it away, the less you're going to um, put a lot of weight or decision into it and just kind of have fun. And before you know it, a doodle will turn into a drawing and then a drawing may turn into something a little bit more focused. So kind of start, you have to start somewhere. We, you have to crawl before you can walk. So definitely check out the doodles when I release those. And I'm not the only artist that releases doodle videos. So um, 
search YouTube and just start practicing. Um, and like I said a minute ago, it is kind of nice just knowing sometimes that you might just throw it away so you don't put a whole lot of stress on yourself to complete it perfectly. And that's how you get through a lot of practice. So give it a try, even if you don't show anybody. All right, so we're filling in here and you will see a few spots that I might go over those little tentacles. That's okay if you do that on yours as well. Um, I don't think I'm going to do the black outline on here, but again, I'll decide when we get a little further along. Um, so I'm going to make sure that my paint covers all of that. And yep, we do have a little clip in here. And if you want to move down to a smaller pointy brush, feel free to do that. I totally have the tendency to just stick with the same brush and work my way through it and turn it around in different directions. But no matter what in art, adjust for what you need for your um, comfort level and skills at any given day. And again, if you're on that stretched canvas, carry that color around the side. Just looks really nice doing that. Um, and it's easier to do it now while you have the color made compared to trying to color match when you're done painting. Um, when I used to paint on more stretched canvas, I always forget to paint the edges. So I'd end up painting them black um, afterwards. And that was kind of nice too. So that's an option. Oh, nice. Good. I'm glad you guys are uh, doodling on your own. I see a little volcano you guys talking about. Excellent. That's that's how you start. Um, so that's good. And thank you. I'm glad you guys enjoy the channel. Appreciate it. Awesome. Cool. It really is through your guys' support, um, continued support showing up, um, that gives me the encouragement to continue to keep going. So as I was talking and just kind of threw that on there, this is going to be the wet on wet blending for those of you that are watching the video that have never seen this before. You have your wet background. I picked up some white with my brush, slapped it on there, and then just like mixing your paint, as you move your brush on top of it, it's going to change the color. Now we'll do this with a little bit of the regular teal, but if you want to introduce blue into this or another color, you can do that as well. So for the direct teal, just kind of slap it on there and then I like to wipe off the excess paint and then go back and just kind of play with it. This is called wet on wet blending and you want to do everything that you want to your background while it's still wet. So that's the kind of the only way that you can blend. So you may have to adjust your pace on your painting or what you want to accomplish based on um, how quickly or slowly your paint might be drying. And if you get into the groove of where you just uh, really enjoy the wet paint and you want it to stay wet for a long time, then you'll eventually bump up and start working with oils. Some oils will stay wet for a couple of weeks, some dry rather quickly. All right, and let's see, let's get a few of that up there and then I'm gonna throw a few more spots of white on here. But you do wanna do everything to your background and then we're gonna move into this bright orange uh, octopus. All right. And since I was kind of keeping these little kind of choppy brush strokes as I was around um, the tentacles on this octopus, I'm just going to continue that as I move up above his head. But whichever brush stroke that you've been working with as you filled in your background, just kind of stick with that. And again, it may change. One day you may um, have short choppy little brush strokes. Another day you may want something uh, longer brush strokes and a smoother surface. But you have to try a bunch of different avenues and methods and styles to kind of find out what you like and don't like and that way you can develop your own style. And I used to tell my students that painting is like handwriting. Everybody has their own style and uh, you just have to learn to embrace your own style. I know a few people that like their own handwriting. I am not one of them. I have very sloppy handwriting. I do like my painting style though, so I at least found a balance with that. And if you want any of your other colors in here, like I said, do what you want to your background while it's wet. And then we're gonna clean the brush really good. And we're gonna move into a yellow and orange mixture and kind of lay our base on our octopus and layer some of our colors. All right. 
All right, and you do want to clean that brush really good because we're um, not quite full on complementing colors, but these are on the opposite side of the color wheel from each other. So you don't necessarily want to mix your blue with your orange. They'll kind of cancel each other out and make a muted color. All right, so that's actually quite a bit of orange. Um, I'm gonna pull more, leave with the orange that's on my brush and start pulling the yellow aside. There we go, this is closer to the color that we're looking for. So kind of start with your yellow and add your orange and get close to the shade if you're kind of color matching with mine. If you wanna do a purple octopus, a blue, red, you are more than welcome to change your colors to anything that you want. And also with this video and any video that I teach, um, you don't have to just use paint. If you have crayons or markers or colored pencils, you can still follow along and use this as a guide, but use the materials that you have at home so you don't have to go purchase new things until you're ready. All right, so we're basically gonna be putting this um, pretty much all over the, the, the head of the octopus, and then we're gonna put it in a few places in between the tentacles, and then we're gonna go a little bit darker, and then we'll come back and add some yellow and some um, of our highlights on there. And if you have to mix this color a second or third time, again, it doesn't have to be exact same shade, and my, I am using student grade paint. Um, this channel is dedicated to first time and beginner painters. So I use the materials that you guys would be using at home. So my paint is on the transparent side and that's why you can see the lines um, shining through. So if yours is kind of like mine and it's on the transparent side, you've got two options. You can apply your paint thicker or you can apply two coats to it or both. So again, just adjust for what you need with the materials that you have on hand or that you're utilizing. And we're gonna do the same thing with this with the wet on wet blending. We're gonna put those darker colors into this octopus and then lighter colors on top and do the same kind of blending. Again, just love this color combo, that really pretty yummy orangish color with the teal. It's very, it's quite a, quite a popular color combo right now. I'm seeing a lot of beach artwork with these color combos. Mm, okay, so we've got the question, how would you create a shadow on a black object? And how would you highlight a black object? Okay, so um, as you're looking at the photo of this black object, or I'm just going to call it um, a pet since that's what I've talked about for so many years, and I have a lot of people that would come and paint their black dog or cat. Now we call them a black dog or cat um, because that's the main color what they are, but if you actually look at photos of that black object or that black pet or cat, as you look at the photograph, try to notice where you can see the pure darkest black and then you're also going to start to hopefully notice a, a dark gray and possibly a medium gray so even though it is a black object or a black pet um, we're actually going to look at it on the photograph in shades of dark gray so take a look at that if you, if you have a reference item of what you're looking at um, try to see if you can identify a few shades of gray on this black object all right, so now I'm actually just taking that direct orange and we're placing it right on top of um, the yellow orange mixture. And again, because my paint's kind of transparent, I'm being rather generous with the application and the amount of paint that I'm putting on here. And since I kind of started with these little choppy, almost like little dash marks or dots, I'm gonna kind of keep with that for today's painting. And as you're following along at home, you do not have to do exactly what I'm doing, just use again, use this as a guideline. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at the place of where I put each color, the shape that I make with that, and do the best of your ability, mimic that on your canvas. And again, the more that you do this, the more your brain's gonna strengthen this power of observation and the easier this becomes. So with everything, practice, practice, practice. So just keep painting, keep observing, and um, in some of my other videos, I highly recommend progress photos. I think I forget to mention it here. Um, but take progress pictures of your paintings and keep those. So that way in a year from now, you can go back and look and see how far your skills have come 
and it's very humbling and satisfying to have that uh, visual documentation, that visual reference of your hard work and your efforts that you've put into this. All right, so we're just kind of, we've got our dark shadow here. I wanna go ahead and start laying some colors into the tentacles on this octopus so that way they can dry a little bit. And then when we put our white um, for the little suckers on there, it'll stand out a little more bold. So I'm actually gonna add a touch of yellow to it, but we're gonna go darker than what we did for that base color for the head of the octopus. And here we're just gonna be squishing the paint in. So kind of, you get to be an abstract painter as we move through this. And we may make it a touch darker. So again, just kind of observe the placement, the general shape of where I'm going to put this um, and just mimic that on yours. You're doing great. It does take a lot of courage to paint at home, so I'm really proud of all of you. And even if you're just watching the video and not painting, you're still relaxing and you're not watching the news and you're not um, focusing on something else that might be stressing you out. Hopefully this is relaxing you. And if it's not relaxing you, or if it is, just take a deep breath right now. <laughs> just relax, let it go. Um, creativity and even just watching art videos is a nice escape from um, just the over visual stimulation that we go through in the stress of our daily lives. All right, so we're gonna add a little bit more yellow to this mixture now, going pretty light. We're going to fill in this area. So I actually just left what was kind of on my brush, grabbed more yellow and went a little bit lighter. And not light enough, so grabbing a little more yellow. And the more that you mix colors, the more your um, brain will understand and remember the difference between mixing light colors and dark colors and how much pigment you put in for each one. So in your beginning stages of learning to paint, your brain's actually working a lot and taking in tons and tons of information. So a lot of that information won't make sense until that practice comes into play and you get the, you know, the actual hands-on experience and have some aha moments of, ah, oh, this is how it works. This is what I do. So it's important to paint on a regular basis. Um, just look at anything, the more you practice it, the easier it becomes. All right, so good little base colors on there. Not bad. So we're gonna wipe that brush off. And let's see, we're gonna make a super light color so that way that white's gonna stand out even lighter. So we're gonna take some of this white, make a new pile, take a little bit of yellow. So this is gonna be really light. Hopefully that light yellow, this lemony yellow will show up um, at home, yeah, that should be okay. So we're taking this super light color and basically everywhere we have this, this white space of the canvas showing, even if it's not fully on one of the little uh, sucker circle things, we're just gonna basically fill it in so we have something on the canvas. So any remaining canvas space, we're just putting this color and then we'll be putting our details on top of it. And once we get kind of all these uh, all the canvas space kind of filled in. This is what we call is our underpainting. And I personally feel a lot better about a painting and feel like it's got even more potential by the time I get to this point because we look at this totally different as there's no more white space. Um, this white space actually affects our interpretation uh, greatly as we go through the creative process. So that's another reason why the progress pictures are important. So as you take your progress pictures, go back and look at each photo and notice how you interpret each photo a little bit differently based on the colors on the canvas, how much white space is there, um, the amount of details as you get further along into a painting. And again, you're just having that conversation with your brain on how you are looking at artwork, how you are looking at your own progress, your own efforts. And there's no right or wrong answer to any of that. You're just observing and de-stressing and relaxing. Okay, so we've got a pretty good base here for our underpainting. We're gonna go back in. Um, so we're gonna clean that brush. We're gonna go back into the orange. 
my paints, uh, it's not too bad. It's a little wet, but almost dry. But by putting a second layer on here, you're gonna notice how much more opaque that coverage becomes and how we, um, it's just gonna start looking better and getting a bit more of that 3D effect. All right, so going back to that yellow and orange mixture that we were using at the beginning. And if it's a little darker, or lighter than the first time that you made it, it's okay, don't stress. All right, so again, just kind of recreating what we've already done. And even just this little coat, uh, second layer on here is already starting to um, give this guy more volume, more depth, a little more 3D looking. So a lot of art is um, learning to adapt to the variables that you might be creating in. And your tools are a variable. Uh, where you're painting um, affects how fast or not fast your paint will dry. It affects your lighting. If you paint outside, you know, the sun's always moving, so that changes your lighting. So when you see plain air painters, they actually paint pretty quickly because of uh, the changing sunlight. You know, that changes their shadows as their, um, what they're looking at changes. All right, so we're gonna kind of add more to this one and I'm gonna move down to the small pointy brush. And again, you can still kind of see the general area of where we had the darker shadows, but we're gonna go even darker this time. So I'm taking that orange and a touch of red going for kind of a burnt orange color. But again, you'll notice as you add the red, a little bit of red goes a long way. There we go. Again, keeping just with those short choppy brush strokes or little dot marks that I was using earlier. And again, trying to keep my paint kind of thick. I'm coming in at like a 45 degree angle with my brush. Um, but again, adjust and adapt to what you might need for yours. If you like having um, your brush strokes show up, we call those kind of expressive brush strokes. That's when you'll um, kind of push a little bit harder, a little more pressure with your brush. If you want smooth brush strokes, then you'd kind of lay your paint and then come in at that 45 degree angle to kind of flatten out any paint peaks. So try both, see just kind of again what you like. And if you do find that you're holding your breath again, relax. If you find that your brush is kind of shaky as you touch the canvas, that means you are holding your breath. So if you exhale as you touch your brush to the canvas, um, it'll make it a little bit easier for you and you'll be less shaky. All right, so now I'm actually gonna go just a little bit more intense. I'm gonna grab some of that direct red and just in a few spots, gonna add it. There you go, hopefully you guys can see the difference. I'm gonna take a look at my phone real quick. Yeah, good. So another thing that I recommend to all my students to kind of bring into your own painting process, as you paint, um, and especially as you get towards kind of the conclusion or past the 50% mark on your uh, painting progress, I want you to prop your painting up or keep it in your easel, get out of your chair, walk about five to 10 feet away and look at your painting from that distance. That is the normal viewing distance for most things in art in life and especially art. Um, and as the creator, you're usually about two feet in front of your canvas and we're gonna see stuff entirely different than what the viewers would actually see from that distance of five to 10 feet away. So you have to kind of remember how your audience, how your viewer is gonna look at it. And when you look at it from that distance, things usually look a little bit better. Um, and then sometimes you might have to add more highlights, add, increase your shadows, but those are things that you kind of have that discussion with yourself when you step away from the canvas. Okay, so. So I'm actually gonna add a few of those dark spaces in here so that way our lighter colors can go on top. And this is almost like a little section where there's four or five of the arms overlapping each other. So again, just kind of observe the, the weird little abstract shape that I'm making here. 
and just kind of come close to it on your canvas. Doesn't have to be exact. Let's get a few in here. And sometimes even just having one or two little brush strokes of that color when we put the other colors around it just gives that much more depth. And you will start to notice that the more that you paint, the more that you will look at your environment um, and nature and observe things a little bit differently. And that is really kind of the point of painting or the point of art is to just have a new appreciation for your own environment, the own way that you create stuff, the own way that you observe life, but just slowing down and appreciating the small things a little bit more. Okay, so we're gonna clean that brush. Um, the body of the octopus is still wet, so I'm going to throw those highlights in there. And because it's still pretty wet, and my paint's on the transparent side, I'm actually just going to grab that yellow by itself. And as we found out doing the background, these lighter colors get eaten up quickly. So I'm going to kind of glob this in a few areas, and then I'll come back and smooth it into the paint. Like I said, yeah, the yellow gets eaten up quickly. So just wiping off that excess paint. And then I'm just kind of using a soft medium pressure, kind of. And I'm just kind of squishing this light color into the orange. And it's just, like I said, medium pressure. In the demos, we've gone over a few different blending methods. And this is kind of the just kind of smush and smear. If you are partial to what I call the stabbing or the tapping method, you can do that and it kind of does the same thing. It picks up the color from underneath, gives a slightly different texture. Um, so whichever one that you are feeling comfortable with, go for it. Keep in mind that a bit more of that stabbing method, especially if your brush is perpendicular, it does uh, destroy your brush a little bit faster than using your brush in a traditional manner. So don't do it to your expensive brushes. All right, so we're going to move back into those arms and we're going to kind of do the same thing. Kind of brings us into the conclusion of today's painting. So we're almost there. So going to that yellow with just a touch of orange into it. Putting that layer on there one more time just to kind of thicken it up. Make it more opaque. Now, no matter what you paint today, whether you change the colors, keep it exactly like this, uh, please email me your photos. Um, I've been making collages of all the student uh, paintings and it's just, they're getting great reviews on social media. People are liking it saying, oh, I wanna paint that next. So your paintings, your feedback, your sharing of the videos and your artwork um, encourage other people to paint. So. Uh, please keep doing that because they believe you more than they believe me until they actually start painting. So you guys are my, my ambassadors to get more people to paint. And I'm all for more relaxed people painting and chilled out uh, than how stressed out a lot of people have been in the last couple of years. So share the word, share your creativity, and encourage other people. All right, so we're going to grab the yellow in a minute and we're going to put a big, a bright highlight right here because this is kind of the uh, part that's pushed forward. I think I got the yellow on the other spots. All right, so I'm going to keep with that pointy brush. Just again, just like we did on the, the head of the octopus, we're just going to lay it on there pretty thick. And then we'll come back and kind of blend it in. All right, and then I do need to fill in the eye of that octopus, and I think they do have pretty dark eyes, but given that I have a light teal background, we're actually gonna give him a light, super light teal eyeball. You can give your squid any eye color, or your octopus any eye color that you like. Just 
I just figured this would be a nice little contrast. And I am going over the pupil, not intentionally, but that just may happen. So we will reapply that black dot in there in a moment. All right, so we're going to add a bit another highlight here because this one's still a little bit more forward. So I'm laying it lightly on top of where that yellow was. And we're going to add a few right here. This one, we won't blend in as much as we blended in uh, the yellow. All right, so wipe off that brush. And again, just light pressure, just kind of squishing that white into the yellow, into the orange. Uh, light pressure. And after you do this one, um, go back and look at it from a distance. Try to remember to do it, to look at it from a distance before you add the white and then go and look at it afterwards. And again, you'll just see how intense and how much this light color pops forward as you look at it from a distance. Okay, so let's get that black little pupil in there and then we're going to actually really thickly put on little globs of white for each of those suckers. And I'm going to use the more pointy of my two pointy brushes. So again, I'm just grabbing that black and I'm going to reapply that pupil and I'm going to do intentionally, I'm going to intentionally go over that white dot and we'll reapply it because uh, that might be a common mistake or common something that you guys do at home. So again, just kind of reapplying that pupil. If you want to make, accent the eye a little bit more, you can outline that eye socket. And he looks like a zombie octopus right now until we put that catch light back in there. All right, so for these blobs of white, and sometimes it's just nice to literally just slap paint on the canvas. And like I said, I'm going to be very generous with the amount of white and I am moving up to that middle flat brush because basically I just want to grab a, a blob and we're going to put it here and then maybe do a little swirl. And then when we get into the smaller ones, then I'll jump back down to um, the pointy brush. So you're going to grab a, a good blob and sometimes it's nice to just say, hey, I'm painting a blob. And kind of you can kind of follow where those um, little sucker circles are. And you can see that pretty much every brush stroke, I'm going back and grabbing another kind of little dollop of paint, little blob of paint. And they don't have to stay perfect circles. If you actually think about um, all these little suckers, they're constantly moving. And if you've seen the octopus at the aquarium um, and they're actually out, uh, I think I remember a couple times I've been to the aquarium, I went early in the, in the morning and the octopus was out and crawling all around the window and I could just, uh, each one of these little suckers moves individually and just, it's amazing what these creatures can do and the small spaces that they can uh, slip through to escape. Very, very awesome. And even how they hide. I've watched some of those nature videos and watched an octopus uh, pulled himself into a clamshell and shut it to avoid a predator because they were out in open sea. Yeah, just so fascinating. And again, as you're adding these, even halfway through, look at it from that distance. And again, like I said, I tend to stick with that same brush pretty religiously, but if you are getting into those smaller little dots, jump down and grab the pointy brush. All right, oh, and we got to do the catch light on that eyeball. So if you um, look at your brush, if the bristles are kind of spread apart, 
wipe off that excess paint and you can kind of twirl the brush and that will bring your bristles back to a point. You may need to clean it really good too if that's not if it's not coming back at a point. And we're just basically going to place a dot on top of the black pupil and you can reference the traceable for where it's at um, or just check the video. But definitely make sure you exhale as you touch your brush to the canvas. And that's it. You just basically put a dot on there and then again look at it from that distance just to see how you're interpreting it. So the more you get into art and creativity, the more you're going to learn about how you look at the world. All right. So yeah, so I think this brings us close to the conclusion of the video. Just went a little over 30 minutes, not too bad. I did acquire a new phone that has its own uh, microphone jack and plug. So hopefully my phone will not die like it did a couple weeks ago. I do learn from each of these technical little blips and try to do what I can to make it better. All right, but yeah, email me photos of what you guys paint. Um, any questions, suggestions for future demos? I think we actually have um, almost three weeks out now in our uh, demo subject suggestion. <laughs> um, but I am keeping a list of everything and I've got the ones from the last couple of days. But anything you want painted in the future, let me know. Likely I will keep doing the daily demos all the way through the summer and then I think come fall I'll get it down to maybe a three to five times a week schedule as I get um, business back and going. But uh, let me know what you like and don't like and we'll keep making stuff happen and thanks for showing up. I really appreciate your guys' support. You keep me going and I'm loving all the suggestions and the things that we're painting every day. So uh, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel share it with your friends, and I will catch up with you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Cheers.